Okay, so Mark meets Rob Steeles, Head of Copy at 23Red. Hi Rob. How are you doing? Um, can you give us a very quick summary of your career to date? Um, yeah, I um, started in advertising at the tender age of 17 with a uh, work placement opportunity at JWT in Manchester whilst I was in college. Um, got how, bitten. how did you get that? Um, it was, I was doing graphic design and the uh, college tutor came up to me and said, anybody here wants to work in an advertising agency over the summer? And uh, nobody knew what an advertising agency was, what an advertising agency did. I put my hand up, grabbed somebody who, who seemed keen as well, my mate, to the side of me, and said, oh, we'll do it, we'll do it. So we scurried off to JWT in Manchester with a big portfolio full of menu designs and uh, logos and things. And the creative director then was called uh, Steve Longdon. And um, he showed us exactly what he did for a living, which he just got a big black pen, drew a box and said, here we do, that's what we do. We do a, a little marker visual and then we get people like you, graphic designers, to, to illustrate it and make it look pretty. So I thought, God, I can't believe somebody gets paid to... Uh, <laughs> Colouring boxes. Yeah, just, just come up with doodles and gets paid for it. It's a great idea, just come up with the ideas. Um, so he gave us some briefs, we went, we went away and came back the next week and um, we basically just dumped a lot of ideas onto his desk and, and, and he said, cool, yeah, come and work here. And we worked there for like two summers, so it was really good. So it was a real baptism of fire, so we were very, very young earning good money in Manchester and... and uh, what year was this roughly? Oh God, uh, it must be 20 years ago. Okay. Mm, bleh, don't know, I'll be giving my, uh, my age away <laughs> if I did that. And yeah. then from there, kind of, where, how did you move on in your career? Um, uh, I, I kind of, I, I knew I kind of wanted to do that for, for a living, so I carried on doing, I did my, my um, BTEC graphics, which it was then, uh, A-level art, uh, and then I went on to uh, Bucks College, got the degree, and um, and then I started pretty much got a job before I left college, which was a, unheard of. That was at FCB under uh, John Bacon and Alan Midgley. Um, uh, and again, that was a great time. Um, I learned a heck of a lot from them, which mostly was to not suffer fools gladly. Um, and from there, I moved on to a small startup agency, which was Night Leach Delaney. Again, interesting to be on the other side of the flip coin, an agency that needed to earn a lot of money very quickly in order to stay alive. Um, ultimately it didn't, which was sad because it did some great work and Paul Delaney and uh, Andy Ray, who were the uh, creative directors, did some fantastic stuff. It just just didn't have traction in the market at the time, so that was a shame. Um, I then went to WAV, uh, did uh, a huge amount of direct mail and direct marketing and got all the experience and that's where I truly started to kind of like sharpen my, my pencil nib and become a proper copywriter um, uh, because you had to. It was uh, huge brochures, it was uh, hard selling stuff, so every, every single word on the page counted in terms of the uh, return on investment for the client, so that was, it was a, a really, really good learning ground, so that was a couple of years. Um, then I got headhunted to go to TBWA GGT, or GGT Direct as it was then. Um, uh, and eventually Nick Moore joined, and that was kind of the precursor of, of integrated agencies. He had the foresight of bringing the creative departments of direct in with uh, the discipline of digital, because uh, it's all response-based stuff, uh, and some amazing work there. In fact, I'd probably say that was the most fun working at an agency uh, in my career to date, because it was, he was just a visionary. Um, that I left there to go to Wonderman with Steve Harrison, uh, let's say about that the best. Uh, and then Publicist Dialogue with Mike Cavers, um, and uh, where did I go after that? Uh, do, 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 leader, MNC Saatchi, and now 23 Red. Cool. Um, if you could work for any agency in the world, mm -hmm. who would it be? Oof. There's probably, I've probably got three. Uh, Drogo5, um, doing amazing work, uh, and, and very strategic, but creative with it. I, I just love the, the uh, kind of blend of being business-minded and strategic and creative is just fantastic. Uh, Sidley um, is another great agency. Um, uh, trying to think where else. Yeah, probably those two. Probably those two agencies. Um, Happiness Brussels is a, another great agency which is doing some fantastic, real kind of left-field stuff. But again, big thinking. Cool. Which superpower would you like to have, and why? Um, oh gosh. I'd probably like the ability to shape shift into anything I wanted to become. Uh, you, you could become the pavement, you could become the ceiling, you could <laughs> become an object, you could become a camera. Uh, I don't know. It'd just be it'd be interesting to be to become something uh, other than a human. I think would be quite interesting. 
Okay. What's the best thing about agency life for you? Uh, it's the it is the challenges, multiple challenges. Whether it's um, trying to crack a campaign, whether it's trying to fine tune the actual business or your client's business, um, and also meeting lots of interesting people. I mean, the clients themselves are uh, usually quite an insp- inspiring bunch of people. So it, it, it's always good to chat with your clients because they've got the most knowledge. You know, you kind of. Uh, meet these people and they really really do care about what they're what they're selling it's infectious so it's quite cool okay who inspires you either in this industry or externally um industry wise uh dave droger um dave trot a lot of daves um <laughs> uh and uh yeah oh, david abbott as well is another one um i used to send david abbott um ads that I'd written for him to read on my copy and he used to edit it and send it back to me which was fantastic unheard of amazing um, brilliant guy um, uh, John Webster um, but outside of outside of life I guess outside of industry, uh, industry life uh, Ernest Shackleton Emmeline Pankhurst um, uh, oof gosh um, Bill Gates um, just lo- I love the philanthropic side to what he's done he's created a, a huge monster but now he's trying to do something different uh, Lance Armstrong, you know whether he's a doper or not, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just just his kind of tenacity and drive. Um, in the current economic climate, with things not looking too good, have you ever had the threat of redundancy before? Yeah, I've been made, I've been binned a couple of times. Uh, first, my first job at FCB, uh, we ended up uh, being made redundant. Um, that was account losses, and it was a purely financial thing. Um, I think we got replaced because they need to get a new photocopier or something. We were very, very cheap at the time. <laughs> and you were junior then? Very junior, so yeah. So how does that affect your confidence? Uh, yeah, I think I spent a couple of days really scratching my head and, and wondering whether I'd get another job. And within a week, got another job. You, you, you force yourself to do it. It's uh, and Because one door closes, another opens. It, yeah, it's a cliche, but it's, it's, it's absolutely true. Every time I've had redundancy or the threat of redundancy, or been, you know, it's, it's given you a chance to reinvent yourself. Um, relook at your portfolio of work and go and speak to some new and interesting people um, you might not get a job straight away but at least you're having those conversations where you know, you're know you out of your comfort zone I think everybody has to do that uh, at some stage What advice would you give to copywriters um, seeing as obviously that's your background and that's how you've got to where you are today mm-hmm. um, copywriters that are either looking to get into the industry or copywriters that are already in the industry who want to progress Yeah yeah, it's, it, it's. I think you just have to have passion for it. You have to really be anal about the work that you're doing, and every word counts. And and just look at the way you're you're you're, you're, you're writing, and and who your target audience is, and, and and figuring out those two things always allows you to be a bit of a chameleon when you write. So you can kind of become a woman one minute, you could be a builder the next minute. You can, uh, and, and your copy tone, that's, that's the ability you need to try and have, is to be able to write across absolutely everything. So you could be writing sanitary towels one minute, uh, the next minute you, you, you're global investment banking. You know, people shouldn't know it's the same copywriter. What, as a copywriter, what do you think is the most difficult part of the role? Is it proofreading your own work? Is it the getting the tone of voice on, of different brands? Is it the short or long copy? Um, yeah... I think the hardest thing is actually to stop clients from writing themselves and, and, and everybody has the ability to write and not everybody has the ability to draw or design. So art directors tend to have it a, not easier but they don't tend to get messed around as much because there's a lot more, uh, I guess, alchemy behind what they do. Writers, we all write, so everybody has a point of view of how to do it. My point to, to copywriters is to fight for the reasoning you put on a page, if you're going to give it to a client, it has to be, you have to be able to back it up and say, I've written it in this structure, and even take them through it. And I think a lot of copy is just written on a page, and, and today anyway, PDF to email to a client, and the client just reads something completely cold and doesn't understand, understand the structure. So I always, if it's a piece of copy I feel really kind of passionate about, or a long copy, um, I'll go along with it, and I'll explain the structure, why we've done it. And then it becomes down to semantics. Maybe I don't like that word or this word, but fundamentally the structure stays the same. Um, and do you feel that copy should be written by copywriters in an agency, or are you quite open-minded in terms of copy can be written by an account handler or anyone else that understands the tone of voice? Completely, yeah. I mean, the account handlers are you know, here. They write the brief, the planners write the brief, and they know the, they know the audience, and, and they're, they're the people who... 
uh, are feeding it directly to me. And and you know, the, I listen to I listen to all of them. You know, if they've got a point of view, and if it's not on tone and on brand, um, I have to reevaluate. Uh, so anyone can anyone can kind of can write. It's it's the the difficulty is can anyone write to sell it with that tone of voice? So somebody might be able to write a passage so one of our account handlers could just go, you know, it's blah, 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 but it might not necessarily have the right content in order to make people react to it or click or buy or go... Or... And when you're looking to hire writers, mm -hmm. when you've hired writers in the past, have they had to have come from a particular background or, or had a particular degree um, for you to look at them more seriously? Um... I think there are a few colleges, or there used to be a few colleges around that you kind of knew you were going to get a certain calibre of writer if they, were, if they were junior and they're trying to get into the industry. So you kind of knew who was teaching them and, and what they were getting taught. Um, and, you, and that kind of shows in their work. I think copywriting is is, is kind of a bit of a, a, a craft that's being kicked back a little bit. Um, media tends to be taking over and, and you know people are being punted around as digital copywriters. Um, it still works. You know, there's a slightly different method to do it with SEO and, and alt tagging and meta tagging stuff if you're writing for a website, but it still works. And, and, and uh, it's, 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 more, it's just as relevant today to be able to copyright than it was when I first started getting into the industry, if not more so. Yeah, that's a really interesting point because a lot of agencies still think that digital copywriters are the only people that can write copy for digital platforms. Yeah. Uh, and there are DM writers or above-line writers that can only write ads because that's their background. But yeah. as you said, the skills are transferable and words are words no matter yeah. what platform. Yeah. You, I mean, uh, above-line, uh, you, you tend to write a lot less. My, my experience working above-line was, was you spend a lot of time really fine-tuning headlines and fine-tuning a... Um, two or three lines, um, which is which is great discipline. I think everybody should have that discipline. But then it's interesting that um, like, uh, competitions are coming out, like CBS Outdoor uh, and doing their long copy challenge. Uh, it, it, I mean, going and seeing some of the stuff that was in there, um, it was eye opening to see that some of the standards are really, really, really high. But the book that actually didn't quite make it was a lot thicker than, than the book that did. Yeah. Um, Obviously, some of the some of the ideas are better than others, um, but the, the long cop the art of long copy is kind of diminishing, and you know it's something that is often ignored. If if you're to present a long copy execution to a client, they would kind of go, "Well, who's got time to read it nowadays?" With everything becoming down to 140, 160 characters on Twitter, that's what that's where people are punting ideas nowadays. It has to be really quick, but the breakout is you do a long copy ad to stand out. Um, have you ever received a CV of from a copywriter with a spelling mistake in it? A <laughs> lot. Because yeah, we get it all the time. So what, what, what's your feeling on that? I, I, you kind of feel compelled to write back to them uh, with, with something really sarcastic or just, or just um, mark up their, their CV as if it was a piece of artwork or a piece of copy. Or uh, homework or something. Yeah, like that, that kind of thing, and, and and send it back and give them a five out of ten for you know content and terrible for punctuation. And does as that tend to be more junior people or, or experienced people make that mistake as well? Experienced people. I mean, I had um, I had somebody who was um, his, his background was in editing and and uh, content, uh, uh, trying to break into advertising, and yeah, it was riddled with typos. Couldn't take him seriously, and you know, I haven't got time. I'm a head of copy. I'm not a, not a proofreader, and I often end up having to do a lot of proofreading as, as part of my role, which you know shouldn't really have to do. Um, what's your favourite advertising campaign of all time? Um, ooh, got two really, I and mean, they're both beer brands, which is quite weird. <laughs> um, uh, I love the Castlemaine Forex um, campaign. Um, I just love the irreverency of it. And, and the observation, the insight that, that led to those executions was fantastic. And um, the Heineken. Um, Refreshes parts that other beers couldn't reach. I mean, it's just such a long-running campaign. One idea uh, executed a thousand times. Radio, press, TV, brilliant. Still not boring, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to a quick fire round. Okay. F W A or N M A. F W A. Fruit or veg? Veg. Can line or DNA D pencil? Ooh. Um, DNA D black. <laughs> Cats or dogs? Dogs. Art directors or copywriters? Copywriters. <laughs> Apple or Android? Uh, Apple. Degree or no degree? Uh, degree. Ant or deck? Ooh. 
They're the same, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> retained work or pitch work? Uh, retained. Web or mobile? Mobile. Independent agencies or networked agencies? Ooh. I have to say independent because I'm working at one. <laughs> <laughs> outsourced production or on-site production? Uh, outsourced. And lastly, twist or stick? Twist. Cool, thank you.